Hi, I'm John Parker. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the EME Guide. The purpose of the EME Guide is to help manage EME safety at mobile base stations and radio communications facilities. The EME Guide replaces the Radio Communications Site Management Book, or RCSMB. All mobile base stations must comply with the Australian Safety Standard. Site safety information is available on the Mobile Site Safety website at mobilesitesafety.com.au. Access to this site is available to everyone. Building owners and facility managers can also access site safety information via a login to the Radio Frequency National Site Archive or RFNSA at www.rfnsa.com.au. Contractors and maintenance personnel must always consult the building owner or facility manager regarding site safety requirements. The EME Guide for Site Safety is prepared for all sites and contains important information relevant to site safety, equipment details, cumulative EME modelling of the antenna fields in accordance with the RF exposure limits, access details, access controls and warning signs, carrier contact details. The EME guide also indicates the presence of non-carrier equipment at the site and warns that it may not be included in the RF modelling, but it must be considered by those wishing to access the site. Always assume unknown antennas are operational unless otherwise proven and adopt safe work procedures. One of the key features of the EME guide is to depict operational mobile phone antennas with red and yellow shading on the drawings. The red and yellow shadings highlight areas around the site where the EME levels are above the general public limit. As each site where RF transmitting equipment is present is different, a separate EME guide is produced for each site. The EME guide can be found on the RF NSA at www.rfnsa.com.au. You can search by site name or site number. On the cover of the EME guide, you'll find a photograph of the site to aid in identification, the date of issue and version number, the Radio Frequency National Site Archive reference number. On the next page, you'll find a general overview of EME exclusion zones. On page three of the EME guide, the summary of the site access controls and site safety signage is provided along with a list of the safe work procedures to be adopted at the site. This page also provides a list of contact details for all carriers and other radio service operators present at the site, along with antenna reference numbers. Page 4 sets out the contact details for the site owner and manager, and provides additional links to where you can find site safety information. The following pages provide exclusion zone drawings. The drawings consist of both plan and elevation views of the site indoor structure. Antenna locations and reference numbers are shown with cumulative exclusion zones drawn. The red zones depict where access is not permitted when the site radio transmitters are active or in operation. Yellow areas depict where limited access is permitted to specially trained people, while the white areas are safe for general public access. The final section of the EME guide sets out the equipment list, which is a list of the site radio transmitting equipment that has been assessed in the exclusion zone drawings shown in the EME guide. It's your responsibility to ensure that you manage your safety when accessing a site. If you have any questions in relation to the information in the EME guide, then you must ask for help. Thanks for watching.